All right, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him, who we often call Jesus. In him, we uh, have our faith. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that are watching on the camera. No, uh, I'm sorry, no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to, uh, let's do, uh, let's do Matthew chapter 13. Give me Matthew chapter 13 verse 1. I don't know why my boy's making all that darn noise. My boy ain't like somebody killing him. Hey, Zadok, go to your brother, have him wipe your nose. It's Matthew chapter 13, give me verse 1. Go ahead and shoot through this. We got some ground to cover today. Last week, we kind of played around a little bit. We did a whole lot of talking. We didn't cover a whole lot of ground. I was talking about Christian pastor, and I ended up that. I watched that thing back. I was like, man, I called like three. Three folks scriptures out of this thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, ah, right, yeah, we got to clean that thing up. Yeah, that thing is pretty bad. That's all right, though. We lined it up. It was some good information in this deal, though. Oh, my gosh. Where y'all mama at? Where Yeah, okay. Go give it to TJ. All right, this is uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. Let's hear what the book got to say. The same day, Yahushua. I... So we say Yahushua. His name is Jesus, right? But we say Yahushua. Because we know that in the in the, his original language, which was Hebrew, that's how you would pronounce his name, right? Through the process of transliteration, it gets to Jesus, right? It's like it's like taking it's like taking uh it's like taking my name, saying it in Spanish Felipe, right? And then you come around and say it in, in English, which would be Philip. Then somebody come around and say, okay, well, how do you take it from English to Russian, right? So you now I don't know how to say it, right? But whatever it is in Russian, it ain't gonna sound like it was in Spanish where it started, right? And that's how it is here. You took it from. You took it from Hebrew, then you change it to Greek, then you change it to English from Greek. So it don't sound nothing like where it came from. However, the same name is what, brother? What we like? What we, what we learned last week? Same name. Who had the same name? Joshua. Joshua, right? So Joshua, Jesus, same exact name in the Hebrew, right? But the difference is Joshua is translated to English from Hebrew, so it sounds closer. Yahushua, Joshua, sounds closer to the original language. But this other one, it would take in the Greek first, then the English. So it come out Jesus, and it's like, man, those, those names don't even sound like, right? But that's the only reason why. So we call him by his name as it would have been called in this day, right? Yahushua, all right? So it say Yahushua, what happened? Yahushua, the same day went Yahushua out of the house and sat by the seaside. And so great, hold on, he sat by the seaside, then what else happened after that? And great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat. Now, Tony, if somebody say great multitudes, I mean, what do you picture at that point? I mean, just a lot of folks, right? And so if this man, if he is just walking, right? He is just walking by himself. He going. And then a great multitude, they what? They were gathered together unto him. So They were gra gathered to together shit. unto him. What does that look like to you? Like, how do you picture? How would you describe that in different words? You got a man. He goes somewhere. And then a great multitude, a lot of people, went to him and gathered to him. How would you describe that in a different way? Yeah, right? Just drawn to him, right? Following him, right? So now you got a great multitude of people following this man who just, he, I mean, he's just trying to get in the darn boat, right? And all these other people just follow him. Watch this. So that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Uh-huh. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. He said, a sower went forth to sow, right? They about to break it down at this point. Right, Yahushua, he gives them a parable, hey, hey. and after he got after he got done with the parable, he wanted to understand. He wanted to know what does this parable mean. That's what the disciples said. 
Yeah, like, man, why are you talking these parables? So let's skip on down. Give me verse, uh, I think I want verse, uh, what I want, 10 or 13? Mm, I feel like it's one of them. It's, uh, you can get 10, yeah. Give me 10. All right, so this is verse 10. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. We skipped over, just so y'all know I ain't playing no voodoo. What we skipped over was uh, a parable about the sower. That's what it's called, right? The parable about the sower. So he gave four different scenarios of four different types of seed. And he can, he, in, in that part of it, he doesn't explain anything. Then they asked him to explain. This is what we're about to read right here. This is uh, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why do you speak to them in parables? So stop. Subject would be them. Who's the, who's the people who, who's, uh, who's talking right now? The disciples. Right? So the disciples asked a question about them. Who's them? All right? So we have two people. We have two groups. Disciples and the multitudes. Right? Disciples follow Yahushua. Right? Follow Jesus. Multitudes follow Yahushua. Follow Jesus. Right? Two groups and two separate groups that follow them because it's called one disciples and the disciple calling them them. They ain't saying other disciples. They saying it, what's them? Why are you talking? The, I just want to make sure I ain't making nothing up. What did it say? And the disciples came and said unto him, Why do you speak unto them in parables? They didn't look at the other people as disciples now. They look at it like, now they following them. That's for sure. Right? Because they came and they multitudes and they gathered onto them. But he looking at it like, well, why are you talking to them like that? Why Why are you talking? He didn't look at it like, you You, you weren't talking to us just now when you were saying all that confusion. So you obviously wasn't talking to us. Why are you talking to them like that? Let's see what Yahushua said. Because it is given unto you to know the mystery. So he said you, disciples, talking to him, right? Disciples talking to Yahushua. They say, why are you talking to them that way? He's speaking back to the disciples, said it's given on to you, right? So it's given to the disciples. What happened? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Them, multitudes. So it's the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven is given unto disciples, but it's not given unto the multitude that follow Jesus. You got a multitude of people that follow Jesus. Mysteries not given to them. Disciples are given to them. Right? That's important. Why have we never been taught that? Why have why we been called Christians? We've been called all this other stuff. We've been called Muslims, some of us. Right? We've been called all these different things. Why nobody told us that he say very clearly in the book written, nobody makes it up. You can't find Muslim in here. You can't find nowhere where a Christian is being, I mean, a, dis a disciple is being called a Christian, which you can't find a disciple being called a disciple. And they tell you very clearly, oh, the mysteries is given to you. So why are we trying to be all this other stuff? Look at the book. But unto them it is not given. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, uh -huh. and he shall have more abundance. So if you would decide, this, I mean, this is what he's saying. He said, it's given to the disciples, not given to them, right? Whoever has, more will be given. In other words, if you're a disciple, because it's given to you. If you're a disciple, well, I'm going to even hook you up even more. But what? He said, it's not given to them. So what's going to happen to the people who don't have it? But whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So what does it mean when you see, but see not? When the man say, them, they seeing, but they see not. I mean, how do we put that? I mean, this 2018, I almost said 17, in 2018, how do we speak, how do we say that in 2018, excuse me, language? You seeing, but you don't really see. You just, I mean, you think you see. I mean, you looking at something. You know what I'm saying? You think you getting it. You think you got that thing all together, but guess what? You ain't got it. Right? You ain't got it. Ask Tasha for a little bit of help. She might be able to help you out. Right? You ain't got it. That's what he's saying. He's like seeing. But you don't see. What's the next thing he said? He said something about hearing. Yeah. In hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. Right? In hearing, I mean, they go to church every weekend. They go to mosque every, they go to kingdom hall every weekend. Right? They looking at it, and then these people talking, they like, man, that was a good word we heard from Pastor. Y'all, you were like, no, you ain't heard that. Right? You, Because you heard, you hearing it, right? Because they, they, they read, they read, do, at kingdom hall, do they read out of the Bible? I guess so. 
Christians. When we was in Christian churches, they read out the Bible. I ain't gonna lie on none of these people. Even the Muslims, they sometimes read out of the Bible, right? So it's not that these people are not hearing. He's he not gonna lie on these people like you're not hearing nothing. He's saying even though you hear, no, you ain't hearing. Even though you see, no, you ain't seeing. And then what does he end it off with? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. No, we always oh, skip something real quick. Go back. Therefore speak out of them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Neither do they understand. Give me John chapter 4. I'm sorry, John chapter 6, verse 44. John chapter 6, verse 44. He said, neither do they understand. They think they see something. They think they hear something. But they don't understand. This is John chapter 6, verse 44. Watch what the book talking about. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. All right. So if we believe what the book say, how you get to Yahushua? And when it say me, it ain't talking about T, it ain't talking about me, right? When it say me right there, it's talking about Jesus. It's talking about Yahushua, right? So he said no man can come to Jesus unless what? Unless the Father which has sent me draw him. Only way you get into him is if the Father draws you, right? Fact, right? Getting to, if we wrote an equation down, it would be get into Jesus or Yahushua. Get into Jesus equals drawing by Father, right? That's our equation, right? So let's look at it again. Give me one. All right? So we're going to say, we're going to put a Y, you know what I'm saying, for Yahushua, right? Equals Drawn by the Father. We can put a D. You know what I'm saying? You got to be you got to be drawn by the Father to get to the Y. Right? All right. Now, let's read the next verse. It is written in the prophets. He says, it is written in the prophets. And they shall be all taught of God. He said, all of them going to be taught of God. Right? Taught of Yah. Right? Let's hear about it. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. So, now we have another equation. He said, you come unto me, Yahushua. And how you got to get to him this time? If you heard and learned of the Father. He said, every man that has heard and learned of the Father comes to me. So now, this equation, you got heard plus learn. Learn. What's another word for learned? If you've learned something, what does that mean? You understand. You know it. You understand. You remember back in, in Matthew 13, he told you. He said, he said, seeing, they don't see. And hearing, they don't hear. Neither do they understand. Well, if you learn something, you understand. So that's all the rest of that stuff out the window. At that point, you're no longer a, a mere follower, right? You're no longer just a person in the multitude that's following Christ, following the Messiah, following Jesus, following Yahushua. At that point, you understand. So that means seeing, you did see. And hearing, you did hear. And you did understand, right? So he says, if you hear and learn, that equals coming to Yahushua. We have another one that says, if you're drawn by the Father, that equals coming to Yahushua. So now, this is math, right? This is math. This is, how, this is how logical the Bible is. Logically, what does drawing mean? What's another way you can be drawn based off of this equation? You got to be called, well, being called, hearing and learning. Hearing and learning, mm -hmm. right? We know both of these get you to Y. So if this gets you to Y and this gets you to Y, that means that these are equal. Right? You want to be drawn by the Father, you have to hear and learn of the Father. Read that 45 one for me one more time. Let's make sure it makes sense. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. You hear and learn of the Father, you come unto him. You drawn by the Father, you come unto him. How you know you're drawn by the Father? Because you heard and you learned. That's it. Everything in our book. When, when Peter, right? Peter was walking, we ain't got to get it. Peter, Peter was, was talking to uh, Yahushua. Yahushua asked him a question. He said, who do men say I am? Right? A lot of people threw out some suggestions. Yeah, they say this, John the Baptist and all this. And then he looked at Peter. He said, but Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter said, well, I say you're the son of the living God. And you know what he said back to him? He was like, man, what you said, that was revealed to you by my father. Yahushua told you, like, that was revealed to you by my father. Now, do you think Peter, before he said that, was like, okay, Father, go ahead and reveal unto me the right answer so I can say it. You look at Peter. Peter had no idea it was revealed to him by the Father. 
The only way he knew it was revealed to him by, by the father, because Yahushua told him, hey, that was revealed to you by my father. That's how being drawn by the father is. We don't know before it happens. We know by the evidence, by the things that we say, by the things that we do, by the way our lives change. That's how we can look back and we say, you know what? That was a touch of God. Right? When you look at Egypt, we read through Egypt, right? All right, so Moses came in the house, right? He came in, he talked to the Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh, you know what I'm talking about. You read it, right? He said, Pharaoh. Most like God said, let these people go. Right? Pharaoh like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Right? Then Moses said, I got something for you. We're going to have to go ahead and, what did he do first? Turn the snake? Yeah, turn the snake. So he's going to say, he had, he had to stop. He said, okay, let me show you something. Turn that thing to a snake. Right? Who remembers what Pharaoh's reaction was? The other magicians did the same thing. The other magician did the same thing. So he was like, that ain't nothing. What the magician do? They turned theirs into a snake. And when what they snake do? They snake... No, they snake got ate by Moses' snake. That thing got ate. Right? But at the end of it, you look at it, you be like... We can do what Moses did. I mean, his snake a little stronger than ours, but you know what I'm saying? He ain't really did. So Pharaoh's heart got hard. He was like, man, I ain't listening to this stuff. He like, boy, if y'all get y'all butts out of here, I ain't letting y'all butt go nowhere. Y'all better make some more bricks. You know what I'm saying? Boy, what's wrong with y'all? Right? Then he come back. Moses come back. Run the darn mouth. You look at Pharaoh. You're mad. I'm running this whole place. You, I had you in my darn house, boy. You know what I'm saying? You got raised with me. Nah, it would have been a different Pharaoh. Huh? This Pharaoh didn't know Moses. No, 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 no. I'm saying that. I'm saying that they got raised in the same house. Oh, okay. Like not, not together, but they got raised. I mean that. I mean this is my stuff, right? These are really my people. You was a leech. Your butt run, right? I'm running the house now, and then you come back, right? And you think you doing something? We let you, boy. You to help, and you think you okay? So you come back, and now this time you come back, and you like. Let the people go. What's the second thing he did? Uh, second thing, he turned the water to blood. It's water, right? So second thing, he said, you know what? It's the water. You know what I'm saying? You let my people go, we good. If not, all the water y'all see, even the ones in the pots, he said, that thing will turn to blood. What happened? That thing turned right to blood, right? What Pharaoh do? The magicians did the same thing. He sent the magicians. He said, all right, you know what I'm saying? Go find some. Yeah, they searching, trying to find some clean water. They found some clean water. He's like, all right. They turned there to blood, too. He's like, man, we ain't listening to Moses. You know what I'm saying? We can do the same stuff. They couldn't turn it back to water, though. You know what I'm saying? They turned to blood. He's like, man, we ain't listening to Moses. All right? The Mo uh, Pharaoh asked him, turn it back to water. All right? So he did it. Okay. What's the next thing to happen? Moses mean, came back. Was it the frogs? Frogs was next, I think. I want to say frogs was next. That was next. That was later. Right? Yeah. That's the fourth one. Right? So now you got the frogs jumping around. They did the same thing. They was like, oh, we can make frogs too. But we can't make them go away. So go ahead and pray to God. Make sure they go away. Right? They still not rocking with Moses yet though. Then the lights came. Right? Then the gnats, the flies. Right? All that came. And who remembers what the magician said that time when he asked them to duplicate? It's like, the finger of God. They said, this is the finger of God. God, because they couldn't duplicate that. They said, we don't know how he did this trick. Magician was sitting there, I mean, I'm opening up all my magic books. You know what I'm saying? I talked to my uncle who been doing the magic all his life. Can't nobody figure out how to make all these flies and gnats come out of nowhere. That's crazy. Right? So now, after seeing the effect, they can say, that's the finger of God. They couldn't make that determination beforehand. They had to see something first. Same thing with us. We can't make the determination beforehand. We got to see something. Right? When we sitting here struggling in our life, crying, sitting there, man, I'm tired of being like this. And we start reading this word and we start believing it. And then we just look back 10 years later and we be like, I ain't sinned since that day. I made a decision that I wasn't going to sin because I believed in the most highest God word and I know that he died for me. And I know that if I mess this up, I'm taking my butt to hell. And that's it. I'm done. That fear turned into the, the faithfulness and the love of the Most High God. Ever since that, I've been changed. You look back and you say, that's the finger of God. Who else can do that? Who else can do that? We, we go to our Christian friends, our Christian family members. We tell them, 
man, I, I just got to stop sending. Like, from this day forward, I just can't send no more. What they going to tell you? Boy, it ain't it's Now, you know, that's impossible. On the, the main thing is, brother, what you want to do is just make sure you try your hardest. Right? You go to your Muslim friend. I mean, from this day forward, I just got to stop saying, you know, everything is a sin, right? I mean, you could, I mean, you could even just, I mean, you could just comb your hair the wrong way and that thing might be a sin. <laughs> right? Then, then you go, I don't know the joke. Oh, I can't tell you what it's over. Wouldn't it say? They're going to tell you celebrating your birthday a sin. Right? All these other things. So, you know, you know, there, yeah, you ain't getting past that. You know what I'm saying? You might just have a little bit more, too, too much fun to do, but nah, that, that thing was a sin. That thing ain't godly there. You know what I'm saying? Huh? You can't say bless you when you say sneeze? Oh, that's a cold game right there. That's crazy. You mess around, let that thing just slip out. You think you being polite? You in Kingdom Hall. Hey, you. Bless you. Hey, look at you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you better get your butt up out of here. They looking at, they looking at you. I mean, it's a hard rule. Right? So you look at all these different things. You like, all these other people, they going to tell you it's impossible. You know why? Because when they see it, they going to be like, that's the finger of God. That's how it's supposed to be. Right? You got to show them the impossible. And then they say that's the finger of God. That's what, that's, that's what we're looking at here. This is how you be drawn by the Father. You look back. You look at your life. You look at the signs. You look at all these different things from based off of what you learn. And then understanding it. And through understanding, we move differently. We think differently. We practice. live differently. We put it in practice. <clears throat> and from there, we can say, that's the finger. I was drawn by God. Now I'm on my way to Yahushua. When we reach Yahushua, Tony. When do we get to the man? To Yahushua. Our goal is to get here. When when does that happen? In the last days. In the last day. When that happen, T? I mean, you're gonna come down, you're gonna hear that trumpet. A whole lot of people gotta get killed. Who's saved right now? Nobody, you know, nobody really. Right? That's where it gets confusing. Cause you go, I mean, we've been taught our whole life. I'm saved, sanctified. I mean, just believe. John 3 16, right? Just believe. I'm saying, if you believe that you saved, you good. But that's what confuses us, because now we look at it, I'm saved. So then you read the Bible, and it's like, you sin, you go to hell, uh, anybody who sins willfully, you know what I'm saying? All these different things, you looking at it, well, I'm saved, and then I sinned afterwards. So that stuff unsettle you. So you go back to your pastor, you like, you know what I'm saying, what does this really mean? Your pastor going to throw, you know what I'm saying, throw that mumbo jumbo at you. And then you like, I don't really get it. But then you you buy into it for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But that thing don't feel right. Cause you send it again and again. It's like, eh, something's not right here. And that's why you have so many people leaving the church. But what happened when they leave the church? They go out here to eat kooks. Eat kooks, they're gonna tell them, oh, well, you know, God is not real. Or God is inside of you. Yeah, that's the worst one. God is inside. <laughs> These ones that make up God, they own God, it's like, well, to me, God is. You know what I'm saying? Some anybody start off with to me, God is. Don't even think of it. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, right, it was nice to meet you. I, I, I appreciate you, Todd. I, you know, I got somewhere I think I need to be because this thing is to you, God is. That thing is scary. How right, to you? To you, God. Okay. Let's just logically put this thing in perspective. God, we know somebody created all this. Something created all this. You came, you let them tell it billions of years later. You let me tell it thousands of years later, right? Right, so within every one, you came a whole lot of time later, and you mean to tell me you gonna tell me what God is to you? That's crazy. You can't even tell me what your girlfriend, your boyfriend is to you. You get cheated on, you get darn dogged out, you don't know what it means when she not texting you back, but you gonna tell me what God is to you. That make a whole lot of sense. These people don't know that devil been out here doing it. Where you think your your your, your, your man get it from when he lying? You think he just made that up on his own? He got that from the devil. He's been doing this for years. And you think you're going to get one over on him? Yeah, okay. There is some book. That's what we're here for. We got to make sure we understand the book. Look, a lot of these lies are simple lies. They only felt like something else because we never knew the truth. If you take away the truth, anything goes. That thing, it don't mean, I mean, anything. You'll be convinced of anything. As soon as you start getting information, they start telling you, you know what I'm saying, you, you, I mean, you, you start looking at like, you know what I'm saying, somebody telling you Trump, right? Trump is, Trump is great. He's the best thing. that He's making America great again. If you don't have any information, you'll be like, that ain't make a lot of sense. Black unemployment, lowest it's been ever. 
People start breaking down them stats for your butt, black unemployed. That's what he said. He tweeted that. Okay. Let me let me let me show you some real black. And they start pulling out them stats. Now you have information. You be like, oh, that was a lie. Now if he repeat that to you again, are you gonna be like, oh no, it's truth again? No. Now you're gonna be like, I remember the stats that Tony showed me. That's obviously a lie. That's what we have to do, right? Right now we're in like a, a la la land, right? We're in a place where it's just like, um, yeah. How do you know that what you believe is the truth? And how do you know? And how do I know? Right? Because nobody really knows nothing. So that's why we're asking that question. How do you know? Right? When you know the book, it's like, I know because I read the book. To somebody who don't haven't read the book, that sounds crazy. You read the whole Bible. It's a whole lot of words. But how do you know what you believe is true? Because what they assume is, oh, Joel Osteen read it too. They assume he did. T.D. Jakes be reading it too. They assume he did. These people ain't read no book. And if they read it, they ain't understood it. Right? They might have heard, but in hearing, guess what? They ain't heard nothing. And seeing, they ain't saw nothing. Neither did they understand. Right? Can't understand the book without the law. It's a uh, it's a uh, Exodus chapter 35. This Exodus chapter 35. Give me verse. Where we leave off last week? Mm, 35 verse 29. It's Exodus chapter 35, verse 29. We're gonna cover some ground. I'm gonna stop running my darn mouth. Definitely learn of the Father through the Old Testament. That's that shows you the character of the Most High. You don't really get that in the New. The New is telling you what you should already know about God. So you're not getting like the full story. So it's good that you started all the way over. Okay. Yeah. When you was young, did your what, did your did your mama like you know what I'm saying like you know what I'm saying what, did your mama seem like rough to you? No. no? What about you? When you was young, did your mama seem like rough? Your dad, dad, your pops, he he, feel, he seemed like rough to you when you was young. When you got older, did you see him any different? No, he is always rough to you, right? Yeah. Always the same person, right? Mm -hmm. So now if somebody was introduced to your dad as an adult, right? You an adult, he, they is introduced to him. They didn't get the history of how he was, right? They wouldn't get a fair assessment, right? Matter of fact, if he tried to introduce himself in that short period of time and just was like, yo, let me just explain y'all who I am, right? You would be able to provide them all the backstory. Right? And then they would get his full character. And him, you know what I'm saying, I got to explain who I am and, you know what I'm saying, just a few, you know what I'm saying, I, I may not get the full character, right? That's how the Most High God is. Right? Father, he ain't changed a bit. The same man, we look at him as, as, in, the, in the past, a lot of people, they tell us, oh, well, God, ooh, I'm so happy I wasn't born in the Old Testament. Ain't that what they tell us? I'm so happy I wasn't born. Ooh, I'd have been dead a long time ago. Right? Because what they're looking at, they look, that was a rough guy. God? Oh, he was rough back then. Oh, but now Jesus. And they see it as a difference. It's because they've tried to get the information based off of an introduction. They haven't gotten the history. Right? And so now they've been taught because that introduction, it's really what it is. We've been taught our own history through Gentiles. Right? We've been taught stuff through outsiders, people who weren't raised in the, in the history. So they teach our black pastors. Our black pastors then teach us. Right? But truly, our black pastors come from a lineage that knew the history. We all have to just get back to understanding the history. Then you understand who God is. Then when you get this short summary that's in the New Testament, you can fit that into the character and be like, oh, that's not this, that's that. Right? So that's what we do. Right? This is Exodus chapter 35, verse 29. Let's see what we're talking about. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work, which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. What are we talking about right now, T? Uh, they're getting the offerings for the tabernacle to be built. All right? We had a tabernacle that had to be built. The Most High God showed Moses when he brought him up on the, on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights. He showed Moses. He said, this needs to be built like this. This needs to be built like this. So he gave them all these different articles, right? All these different things that he wanted them to build. We got a couple pictures up for you. So all these different things, you know what I'm saying? Who knows if they actually look like that, you know what I'm saying? Probably some white folks that kind of, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We don't know. We, we you know what I'm saying? We just kind of, yeah, you know what I'm saying? White folks kind of put these pictures together and we just use them. We don't really know. You know what I'm saying? So all these different things, they, they, this is what Moses kind of envisioned after, after the Most High God showed it to him. He, and he gave it to him in strict measurements, you know what I'm saying? It needs to be this long. It needs to have this shape and this or another, right? So all these different things, this is what they need to build. Whenever you need to build something, you need material, 
right? You need to you need to have some material to build it. So now Moses is like, who going who gonna help us out, right? So now God told Moses, anybody who will bring it with a willing heart, you know what I'm saying? Let them come. Let them come. Let them bring it. Do all that. So that's what the people did. They started to bring their stuff. They started to bring all the materials needed to build and make all the things that the Most High God showed Moses. Right? But it's important that the Bible points out a willing heart. Right? You know what I'm saying? It wasn't Moses going out there, listen, I need you to do this. And if you don't, if you don't bring me some scarlet, you know what I'm saying, some scarlet thread, you rob it, God. You know what I'm saying? You have Moses up there preaching. Yeah, listen, let me tell y'all something. I know what y'all gonna do. Yeah, you, know, you know how the pastor do they pull the money out. They probably they pull about twenty dollars. I don't know what y'all gonna do. I'm gonna put my money in though. Put it right there. Won't you come? You right there, right there, you, you. I know somebody going through something on this side of the room. Right, and they get to doing all that. You don't you don't cheat. Moses not doing that. Moses just put it out there like, man, look, this the this the dream. This the idea. This is the most I got gave. You know what I'm saying? Whoever doing it, let's do it. That's the truth there. You know, I don't have to play, play no games with your brain. I don't have to do none of that stuff. I just tell you what God showed me. You know what you're going to look at? I heard and learned. That's the finger of God. What I need to give. What we need to do to make the dream happen. When, most high, when the most high God gave it to us, that's what he speaks to, to us in. A, a dream. Moses, he spoke to him face to face though, right? But when Moses, when Moses got that vision, what do we do to make that happen? That's all the people thinking about. Yeah, take it. Let's do it. I seen this man split a darn seat. What am I, why am I going to sit here questioning? But no, let's do it. What you talking about? What we need? Scarlet? You know what I'm saying? What you need? Some goat wool? You know what I'm saying? Some goat fur? Some goat wool? What is it called? Goat skin? Goat whatever? Yeah. The stuff that's on the goat. That's covering the darn body. Get it off. Let's do it. Sheep skin. Goat Sheep skin. All that stuff. Right? And that's what they started to bring in. But it has to be with a willing heart. Paul said the same thing. Grab uh, this Luke. We're going to go to Luke first. Give me Luke chapter, uh, I want to say 21. This is Luke chapter 21. Give me verse 1. We're going to try to bounce around a little bit. Try to understand what the books say. It's important that we got a willing heart. On everything that we do for the most high God. That thing can't, that thing can't be out of like, you know what I'm saying? It can't be out of like, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to impress T. Nah, that thing mess you up. You know what I'm saying? You mess around. Could T become God at that point, right? I mean, in a, in a weird way, T become God. I'm trying to impress him, Right? I mean, yeah, that's what it is. That's what I mean. That's what essentially what it become. I mean, in my mind, I'm worshiping God. But what I'm looking at is, you know what? Tia let me stand next to him in church if I give at least $100. I noticed that when I only give like $20, T be like, nah. You know what I'm saying? T told me one time when I only gave $20, I didn't really have faith. I don't like when T feel that way about me. Right, so you start doing stuff out of that, man. That thing, nah, that thing gonna mess you up. That thing gotta be, well, you gotta look at it, you gotta look and feel it, and you gotta be like, you know what? This is the plan of the most high God. Right? It ain't about, it ain't about, I'm gonna get this, and God gonna bless me tenfold. It ain't about that. God got a plan, and I need to be a part of it. If I don't get nothing back, God got a plan, and I need to be a part of it. Right? You notice, they're not just giving gold, just regular gold or money. They give him material to build something specific. Right? There was gold involved, but it ain't, it ain't like just, here, this some money. Right? And if they did, that wouldn't be wrong. But they looking at, there's a specific goal. We all can play a part in this. I'll be darned if I'm not going to do it. Right? This is Luke chapter 21, verse 1. Luke chapter 21, verse 1. Watch what the book says. And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in there two mites. And he said, of a truth I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. Right? And log I mean, logically, that don't make no sense. Rich man just cast in a whole bunch of money. Then you had the poor woman, she just cast in two mites, two little pennies. Right? Y'all, she was going to sit here and say she put in more than everybody else. That don't make no darn sense. But to her, it do. To her, she said, well, percentage-wise. This two cents is worth a lot more than whatever they put in percentage wise them. That's what y'all sure looking looking at. That makes sense. You put that in, that thing was worth way more from you. It was a sacrifice for you. For them, that's just like, yeah, tax write off. You know what I'm saying? You just throw that thing in, it's tax write off. I mean, I think it gotta go. All these churches, they 
All right, so these churches don't, you can't write off taxes by what you put in the churches? Yeah, they give you some. Oh, you thought that paper was just, what do you think that paper? That's a receipt. <laughs> they got to they gotta be able to file that. Yeah, that's a receipt. That's what, that's what that is. That's what they prefer that you had us. Why you can't just get a dollar in there? I mean, you can. But you know what they prefer? You know what they're going to make sure everybody got right in front of their seat in the pew? It's a little receipt. You got to keep that paperwork. Right? They got a non-profit organization, a 501... 501c3. Yeah, 501c3. Right? So with that organization, me, the benefit for me, and what, what the government tried to do is they tried to, they tried to encourage people to support organizations of that type. Right? So they say, you know what? If you use your money to support this organization, what the government will do for you is you can use that to say, I don't have to pay that amount or a certain amount in taxes because of what I've done for this this company or for the, for this uh, organization, right? So that was the benefit that the government tried to do to have certain nonprofit companies be supported. So now you look at it, and what do you have? You have a lot of rich people, right? And the richer you are, the more taxes you're going to end up paying. So what they do is they say, okay, I know I brought in this much, you know what I'm saying, this year. And I'm going to be taxed at 10%. But the more I can write off, that 10% becomes 7%. Becomes 5%. Which means I'm paying less. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to say, where can I donate? So you donate, then you write that money off. Usually the organization that you donate to gives some benefits to you. All right? So if I donate to Red Cross or all these things and I'm a big time donator... Oh, best believe you'll see that I'll be flying out speaking at some of those. These rich people, these rich people that do that, you will see that's what they do. Same thing, same thing with political organizations. All this stuff, you donate to them, you get some kickback. So now it's not just a worthless donation that I'm writing off. It's a donation, write it off, and I get a benefit. Same thing happens in these churches. You get status, right? I mean, you get to sit closer, right? You get all these different things, right? Because they're looking for the money. It becomes a game and all these different things start to, to flow and to move. Right? It's important that we look at it and we have to keep all that stuff out of the word. All that stuff, it, it ends up being nothing about the word. It ends up being nothing about the word. Now you had this woman with the two mites throwing stuff in to the church and she never gets noticed. Means nothing. She ain't even got nothing right off. What does she look like putting two pennies inside of the little little pouch? You gonna you gonna put two pennies inside the envelope? You know she ain't about to put two. She just gonna drop it on in there. She ain't even a blink on the radar. I ain't think about her, right? Most high guy, he look at her. He say she did more than all these people up here, right? That's how we have to think about it. It wasn't about how much gold, how much blue uh, thread, how much scarlet thread, how much goat skin, how much sheep wool. It wasn't about any how much they get. It's just the fact that everybody is trying to put in. All right? Grab for me. I want to say Corinthians. Give me uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10. I appreciate the most high. And he sent this son down here and through him, and we got, it's, it's a lot of information he left in this New Testament for us. There's a lot of information in this New Testament. I'll tell you what, without what he left for us in this New Testament, there's no way we'd understand the, the book like this. There's no way we can be able to look back in the Old Testament, look at this, look at, look at the law, and really be able to understand it like this. He came through, and what he did is he opened that thing up. He's sitting there, we ain't got to grab it. At the end of Luke, though, the end of Luke, did he not go through the whole book with them? With them? They didn't even know who they were looking at. This Yahushua in the flesh, Jesus in the flesh, walking around with him. They had no idea who he was. They, been, they spent the whole year with the man. He just died, rose from the dead, and then he's looking at him like, y'all don't even know who I am. They don't even know who the man is. He's just talking to him. They don't even know. He go through the whole book with him. Immediately, their eyes opened up. They're like, that's him. The man is back. That's him. That's powerful. And guess what he had to go through for them to understand that? Prophets. And what else? Yeah, and the history. And the psalm. And the psalm. Wait, so he come back in Luke? Grab for me Luke chapter 24. 
I wasn't even gonna grab it until you said something. It's Luke chapter 24. Now that we get Luke chapter 24, we're gonna go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It's Luke chapter 24. Give me verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, eh, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. Mm -hmm. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and he entered in. A sepulcher is, is, is a grave site, right? So the Most High God has set it up to where Yahushua, Jesus, he was inside of the tomb, right? They came to the tomb, they saw they saw the stone roll back. It's like, okay. And then what happened after that? They didn't see nothing in there? And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Yahushua. Yahushua wasn't even in there, right? Jesus wasn't in there. So they came, they were looking for him, he wasn't in there. What we know for sure, before that, he definitely hung on the cross, right? Then after that, he definitely got put in that sepulcher, right? He definitely got put in that tomb. They walk over there, three days later, the man ain't even in there. Let's hear about it. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? I said, that don't make no sense. They looked, the two, the two men that was in shiny garments, they looked at them, they said, it don't make no sense if you'd be looking for somebody that's alive where somebody that's dead is supposed to be. You look at that, you got somebody tell, I know I just saw the man die. I know I just, know, I know we buried him right here, and you're going to sit here and tell me, why am I looking for the living amongst the dead? Right? It's because they was, they was hearing stuff when Yahushua was talking. They wasn't learning it, though. Right? Yahushua the whole time been telling them, listen, this is going to happen, and I'm going to be back. But he's speaking to them in parables. So they thought they was getting it. Yahushua was like, let me show y'all something. Y'all ain't really, y'all wasn't really listening. Right? Jump on down. What I want? Verse 14? Is it 13? 14? I feel like it's somewhere right there, right? 10, maybe? Mm, 13. 13 what I want? You know what I'm looking for, right? When they start talking together? Uh-huh. And behold, two of them. It's 13? 13, yeah. So this, uh, this, is, uh, what about, this is Luke chapter 24, verse 13. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, uh -huh. which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs, mm -hmm. 60 furlongs. Mm -hmm. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Right, so they're talking about the fact that Yahushua just died, hung on the cross, he got buried, and then our sisters went to go look for him. And they talking about he wasn't there. So they talking about all this stuff. Cause it's a crazy, this is a crazy weekend. Right? They looking like, man, this thing is. I don't know what darn happened around this time. Right? They live just talking it through. Right? Everybody that's around it, everybody know about what's going on right now. It's a big thing. So they talking, okay. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, uh -huh. Yahushua himself drew near and went with them. So it said, Yahushua is Jesus himself. He went near. And he went with him, right? But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? Right? In other words, he is like, What y'all talking about when y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all sitting here walking with each other and y'all y'all acting sad. Like, why y'all sad? You know what I'm saying? He asked me, he's like, What what manner of conversation? He's like, What y'all talking about? And they don't know that they're talking to him. They don't even know who they're talking to. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Right? And see what that mean? I mean, they see what they don't see. They don't understand. Whole time the man talking to her, right? But they don't hear what he's talking about. Whole time the man tells sin right there with her. They don't know what they're looking at, right? That's how the book works. But watch how it all. All is about the line. Everything we've been talking about is about the line up. Watch this. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, Are you only a stranger in Jerusalem and have not known the things which are coming to pass there in these three these there in these days? Look, Cleopas got a smart mouth. He look at he look at this stranger because they don't know it's him. He was like, man, what you, what you talking about? Why y'all sad? You know what I'm saying? Here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, she was just like, what y'all tripping about? You know what I'm saying? What y'all talking about? Why you sad? Cleo was like, what you, a stranger around these parts, boy? You know what I'm saying? You don't know all this stuff that's been happening? He looking like, you. what are you, crazy? You, you ain't from here or something? Everybody know this stuff. Everybody know that y'all, she was, the biggest thing going right now. And you trying to tell me you don't know what you, where you from? You a Gentile or something, boy? All right, so look at him. Why, why Cleo was talking about? And he said unto them, what things? And all right, y'all, she was like, what you, what? You know what I'm saying? What? Tell me about it. And they said unto him, concerning Yahushua of Nazareth, 
Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. They talking to the man right now. Tell them about yourself. Watch that. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Mm -hmm. But we trusted that it had been he which should be redeemed, which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Mm -hmm. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished. When which were early at the sepulcher. All right, he said, man, and there's some of our women went there looking for the man, and they made us astonished. They they made us worried because he wasn't there. Right? Come on, keep going. And when they found out his body, they came saying that they had. When they also, didn't find his body, they came and they said, "What?" They had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. They saw some darn angels too. He's like, man, you don't understand what's happening this weekend, bro. Where are you from? Are you a stranger around here? You are out of towner. Keep going. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. <laughs> we didn't believe these women. So we ran down there ourselves. Certain of our brothers, they went down there themselves. And they found it just like they said it was. But him they saw not. But guess what they didn't see? Yahushua. So they sitting there trying to explain to Yahushua about how they couldn't find Yahushua. Right? Then watch this. Then he said unto them, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Y'all sure was in there, oh, man. Y'all fools. And y'all slow of heart. In other words, you're not, you're not, slow of heart just means you didn't understand. Right? You didn't believe it. Right? He's like, man, you fools and you slow of heart. Whatever. To believe all that the prophets have spoken. Mm -hmm. Ought not the Messiah have to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Mm -hmm. And beginning at Moses. And beginning where? At Moses. So what, I mean, if you begin at Moses, what you going to have to start with? Genesis. I mean, what you, I mean, I'm beginning with Moses. So what, after I do Genesis, what am I going to have to hit after that? Exodus. I mean, I, I mean, I read through Exodus, but I'm still in Moses. So what am I going to have to hit after that? Leviticus. And then, I mean, I, we got through Leviticus now, but we still in Moses. What are we going to have to hit next? Numbers. We almost through Moses, I think, y'all. What are we going to have to that? Deuteronomy. Boom, we threw Moses. So he said, beginning with Moses, I hit all five of them things. What up? And all the prophets. Oh, that means you got to get Jeremiah. You got to get Isaiah. You got to get uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. You got to get Daniel. Right? You got to get all these. You got to get all the prophets. There's a bunch of little prophets, too. You got to get Micah. You got to get uh, uh uh, what am I trying to say? Malachi. Malachi. That's what I'm trying to say. Malachi. Obadiah. Obadiah. Right? Nahum. You know what I'm saying? You got to get Nahum. How you going to skip Nahum? Amos. Right? You got to get him. You got to get all the prophets. He said beginning with Moses and then what? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Brother, what does expounded mean? Thoroughly explained. He thoroughly explain that's what if you look up the word expound that's what it's going to tell you thoroughly explain beginning with Moses and all the prophets he thoroughly explained what unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself okay keep going and they drew nigh unto the village where they went and he made as though he would have gone further so then he, he read the book to him explained it to him and then they drew nigh Right, so now they interested, but they still don't know who they're looking at. Right, so he, he explained the book to him, then drew nigh, and he is like, "Oh, now I gotta keep going." Right, y'all, she was like, "Now nah, I gotta keep going." Y'all stop right here, okay? I gotta keep going. See y'all later. Right? What do you think he is doing? The boys is trying to test. Him. Yeah, he tried to test him. He wanted to be like, "No, nah, come back." If they didn't say come back, they was like, after hearing all that word, if they was like, "All right, man, we'll see you later," they crazy. He already know oh, y'all ain't for me. He look, he look. After you hear all that word. You're supposed to be like, what do I need to do? You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to drop every, what do I need to do? Tell me what I need to do. Let's see what they did. But they constrained him saying, abide with us, for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. That's crazy, boy. You teach us something else. Stay with us, please. It's night outside. You don't be want to be walking the night outside. He's men. You know what I'm saying? They worried about him in the day and the night. No, 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 no. The day's far spent. No, no, no. Stay with us. We got a nice little bed. Right? Because he had the word. They knew what he was talking about. That man knew what he was talking about. Come on in. All right, let's see. And he went in to tarry with them. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he looked. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. Uh huh. And their eyes were open and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Two things happened. Two things happened for, that to, for, them to, for their eyes to be open. All right? 
They didn't know who he was until their eyes opened. Watch this. Keep up. But two things happened. We're going to come back to that. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And that's the one thing that they remembered. They said, did not our hearts burn when he opened to us the scriptures? Two things happened. The scriptures got opened up to them. It was thoroughly explained, right, where they can understand it. They can hear it and learn it, right? And the second thing was happened is they came to Yahushua, right? They communed with him. He broke bread with them, right? They was like, no, nah, they constrained him. They held him back. They're like, no, nah, come sit with us. He sat down with him. He broke bread with him. And as soon as he broke that bread with him, what happened? The eyes were open. Eyes open. Two things. They heard, they learned, and they came to Yahushua, right? That's what it's all about. He opened up the book to him. Old Testament, not New Testament. Wasn't no New Testament, right? He new. opened up the book. They understood it because he thoroughly explained it. Right? Then after he thoroughly explained it, he got with them. They wanted to. They, they said, no, no, no. I want you with me. Right? And then their eyes were open. That's all we got to do. Just the word that did all of that. That's all we got to do. Without the word, we just out here playing. Patty cake. This is a worthless. If we don't, if we can't thoroughly understand this word, patty cake. Where we at? Second Corinthians chapter eight. I don't even remember what we was talking about. Given willingly. Oh yeah, we given willingly, right? We have the we have the the woman who gave the two mites, all right? Then we got uh Second Corinthians chapter eight, where Paul gonna tell us about some other people. This Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse ten. Watch what the book talking about. It's Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse ten. Herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, perform <clears throat> the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. Mm -hmm. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has, and not according to that he has not. All right. So you see, when Yahushua, when he spoke, spoke to the disciples, he said, everybody who has, what do you say? Everybody who has, more will be given, abundance. And the person who has not, will lose, every, will lose even that he has. Right? So you remember, he told us that. He already told us that. And you see Paul, he coming back, he is like, listen, just give with a willing heart. Whatever you have, it'll be accepted. It's not going to be based off of what you don't have. It's going to be based off of what you have. Because you have something. You came with something in your hand. Right? You give that willingly. So now when the Most High God look at it, he'll be like, okay, well, what you have, I'm going to add on to it. Because he said everybody who has, more will be given on to them. But what if somebody just don't bring nothing because they just feel like, you know what I'm saying? No. I don't feel like it. Right? I ain't bringing nothing to the table. Well, he said, well, even what you didn't bring, now I'm taking away what you had, what you thought you had. All right? But notice he said with a willing heart. That's the key to it. it has, I mean, you can try to bring something that thing. He didn't really bring nothing. That's his anyway. You have to bring it with a willing heart. Right? Watch this. Go to um, go to uh, the next chapter. I think it's, uh, it's going to be 9. I want to say verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Right? So you sow it. When, it, when the book says sow, it's talking about like planting seeds. Right? So it's like. You taking something, you putting it inside of the ground, you know what I'm saying? That thing finally end up growing. So he said, if you sow in sparingly, in other words, if you take this seed, you just like, man, I only got, I only got 10 seeds. So I'm just going to put one seed over here and one seed right there. He said, you know what I'm saying? You sow in sparingly like that, I'm going to keep the rest of the seeds for next season. He said, well, you put two seeds down, so what do you think you about to get back? A whole field? No. You might get one plant. Because you know the seeds ain't, and not every seed is going to make it. You might get one plant. 
Right? So he said, you so sparingly. You plant the seed sparingly. You're going to get it back sparingly. Now, you got them 10 seeds. you just like, you know what? All of that. Just let them things go. Let's see what happens. You get you a couple plants back. You know what I'm saying? Let them things grow. All right? So let's see what happens. And he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountif bountifully. Yeah. You put everything you got in that thing. That's it. When we go to the most high God, we got to put everything in God. I'm not talking about money. Be clear. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about giving money. You know what I'm talking about giving? Everything you got. You know where you can start? Your heart. You know where you can start? Obedience. Doing what the most high God is saying. Stop being a hypocrite. Stop being a liar. Stop being a fornicator. Stop being an adulterer. Stop being all these different things. Stop being an idolater. You walk around with a darn cross on your neck. What do you think? You think God pleased with that? I mean, I'm sitting all day. I got a cross on my neck, though. You look crazy to God. All right? We stop all that stuff. I mean, we can start there. Let's just throw money out the side. All these people that, I don't go to church because you know what? Eat church you just want your money. Church should have your money if he teach the truth. If the pastor teaches the truth, he should have your money. How are you going to pick out the problem? Why you ain't never complain that he just teaching lies? That's what I want to hear from. I don't want to hear you leading the church because he, he taking your money. Yeah, he taking your money. But you know, you wouldn't know if he had taking your money or not if he had teaching the truth. If he had teaching the truth, why, why, why money even matter? You give him everything you got. Right? You looking at who cares? Your soul is saved. How much money it costs to save your soul? Ain't no price on that though. You don't care about no money when your soul saved? That's crazy. The problem with what we should be looking at these pastors and saying that forget how much money he has or should have or shouldn't have. What are you teaching? The people who are sitting in your church, are they going to be saved at the end of the day? I don't think, let, let me tell you something. We at some nights it's been me and him in here. We got the camera running and it's just me and him. You know why I'm okay with that thing? Because what I don't want to hear is I don't want somebody just sitting here sinning, going to leave here, not change their life, and feel comfortable about coming here next week. That's crazy to me. That feels that feel like something I ain't doing right. I'm good. I'm good with somebody. I, I got them all the time. They, you know, they tell us all the time. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, what what y'all preaching the truth over there? No, nah, but I just ain't ready yet. That, I'm good with that. That, I, that makes sense to me. I feel it. I understand. Don't agree. Your butt going to hell if you don't turn around. But I get it. That's a logical decision. What you talking about, I ain't going to be able to keep going with that. I understand what you're saying. I feel it. One day, I might come back and hear you. I'm only 23 right now, and I'm trying to get loose. Listen, <laughs> you take your chances, bro. I feel you. I understand. I can rock with that. What I can't rock with, somebody sitting in here. Be like, yeah, man, what you preaching the truth? Then they go do their thing and come back next week. Yeah, man, give me some more of that truth. Then go do their thing and then come. That's insane. I don't think it can happen when you hear the truth. I just don't feel it can. It would make me uncomfortable if somebody was doing that and I knew they were doing that. And I'm like, and they keep coming back wanting to hear the truth? That thing would make me uncomfortable. Like, this thing might not be the truth that I'm speaking in. Because that thing's supposed to, the truth supposed to cut your butt. That thing's supposed to be, ooh. You know what I'm saying? You either going to change or your butt going to get out of Dodge. It's shining a light on you. When the last time you hear somebody put the light on me, I'm about to steal something. That's crazy. That don't make no sense. As soon as that light come on, they going to stand back like, no, nah, we good. No, nah, we good. That light come on. Now I'm going to steal. Right? That light's supposed to be on right here. You're supposed to come here and be like, ooh, goodness gracious, I'm exposed. That's good. Be exposed. After you be exposed, you have to do one, two things. You have to cover yourself or you got to get out of Dodge. Now it's time to cover. All right? Adam and Eve. They got caught in sin. What happened? Who told you you were naked? They were running around like, I'm exposed. Then they said, they was in there, we naked. Then what they do next? Make some wine cloth. Cover themselves. That's natural. It's cool. That's fine. That's what's supposed to happen. When you're exposed, you have to be covered. Guess what they didn't do? They didn't run. We naked. Go. Somebody gonna see it. Go. They didn't do that. They said, nah, we just gotta cover up. We look a darn mess. We gotta cover up. Most I got honor that. Because what he do after that? He punished them after that. He punished them. Then what did he do after he punished them? He banished them out of the garden. Oh, okay. We he might not remember him. what else he did. We gave him, uh, gave him uh, a son. Gave him kids. What? What you getting at? He covered them. 
Y'all remember the Most High God covered them? Remember that? All right, grab uh, this Genesis <laughs> chapter three. Didn't they make their loincloth? Yeah, Genesis chapter three. Give me verse six. This one might escape me. All this though, all this is important. All this, this is the character of God that we look at. All this stuff in the New Testament. You read this stuff in the New Testament. You don't get nothing. You you don't get it because he's telling you something, making an assumption. Oh, you already know the history. Let me tell you, you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, you, you already know the history. Let me just tell you this part. We got to be able to fit the history into all the New Testament and be like, oh, I get it. That's a full picture there. You ain't got no full picture. You just making a darn mess. This is uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when a woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and did eat. Mm -hmm. And he gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and mm -hmm. they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They covered themselves. Watch this. Keep going. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden you know of the pool about? of the day. I know a Christian pastor that taught on this. You know what I'm saying? I know you know what I'm talking about. Keep going. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where are you? See that? And even, even I made a mistake. I'm happy we're back. I made a mistake because what did they do? They actually covered themselves and they also got out of Dodge. Right? I made that mistake. I'm happy we read it. I appreciate the Most High God for having us go here. Right? And I made a mistake talking about, now you see they didn't run. Now they but did both. And like, first we're going to cover. After that, we getting out of the light. That thing got to happen. That's not, I mean, that's natural reaction. That makes sense. How are you going to sit here, hear the truth, be exposed by the truth, and you just want to sit in it? No, nah, that thing will make me uncomfortable. Go ahead and get your butt up out of here. We good. We, I'm fine with that. I'm good. Now, come on back whenever you want. Door always open. Come on back. Just come back when you ready to. That thing discouraged me. You know what I'm saying? somebody come in here. No, I'm still going to keep sitting, but keep saying what you're saying. That thing would just, goodness gracious. The word of God don't take effect? That thing's supposed to punch your butt or it's supposed to pick you up? One or two. Hey, you know what the book say? Book say, he said it's going to be like a, what is it, a rock? That's grind, a stone. A stone, a stone that grinds in the pieces. He said, he said you either going to fall on the stone and be what? Be uh, smashed into pieces. Nah, you fall on the stone, you're going to be broken. Broken, yeah. Or the stone going to fall on you be smashed and grind pieces. you in the powder. Right. That, that's how the word is described. Two things. There's one stone now. But this one stone gonna have one type of relation. That thing gonna break you. That don't feel good. Or it's gonna fall on top of you and then grind you into power. Mm, that thing don't feel good either. So it's like, which one you want? You don't have no option. It's not one of these is gonna happen to you. Which one you gonna take? You wanna be broken or just ground? What's that? What's that work? You wanna be broken or you wanna be ground into powder? Neither one of them are attractive now. But you know one of them gotta happen. I mean, you on their deathbed, right? No, no, not deathbed. Let's say you in, you in jail, and they're about to put you to death. And they say, you know what? You got two ways you can go. You can burn to death, or we can give you this poison. You look like, I don't want either one of them. Like, what are you talking about? Go ahead and give me the poison. Right? Because he's like, I'm not going to sit here and burn to death. Now, that's crazy. That's how the most I got laid out for us. He tell, I can break you now. Right? It's going to hurt. Whoever broke a bone or something. Anybody ever broke something? I broke my, I broke my arm. You broke your jaw? You, all right. That's cool. Oh, okay. I'm about to say you was up there. Yeah. yeah. But no, that, that, it hurt. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to live with that for a while. And it probably, you probably have to adjust how you do things, huh? Yeah. You have to change. That's what we're looking for. That's why God break us. You break, things got to change. Right? You have to change when something breaks. Right? Or I can just ground you in the powder. You ground in the powder, you cease to exist. So you're done. Right? Which one we want? I'll fall on the stone. Go ahead and break me. You know what I'm saying? We good. I can live from that. Right? You break a bone, you live from that. Nobody's living from being ground in the powder. It's supposed to hurt. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. It's supposed. That's what he told her. He never promises this thing going to be easy. And you're going to get a tingly feeling in your spine. And... That's how you know it's the Holy Spirit and all these different things. That's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to. The man said the word is like a two-edged what? Two-edged sword. When was the last time a sword felt good? That's crazy. If he described it like this to you, then that's how it's supposed to feel. It's supposed to feel like you got cut. That's why the men said, did our heart not what? Burn. Did it feel good to burn? 
But they said, did our heart not burn when this man spoke to us? Because they were being cut by the word. It hurt. They said, now you're right. We are fools. We was slow to heart to believe all the prophets. You know what? The prophets did say that. Moses did say that. And we sitting here acting like we don't understand what's going on. We've been walking with this man for a year. He's been telling us all this stuff. And we sitting here acting like I don't understand what's happening right now. You're right. We are fools. How do you think that feels? When was the last time you had to admit to somebody, yeah, I'm stupid? That was dumb. It never feels good. That's what we have to do to God. I was wrong. I need to change. We can't be like Adam and Eve. Cover ourselves. Then get your butt out of Dodge. Watch this. Most of our God's a forgiving God, though. Watch what he do to these people. And he said, I hear, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Mm -hmm. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Mm -hmm. Have you eaten of the tree where I commanded you that you should not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, the woman who you gave me to be with, she gave she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast in the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Mm -hmm. And I will put in between, between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. And it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Mm -hmm. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in your conception. In, in sorrow you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. Mm -hmm. And Adam said, and to Adam he said, Because you have listened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the fruit of the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Mm -hmm. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth unto you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return into the ground. For out of it was you, were you taken. For the dust you are, and unto the dust shall you return. Mm -hmm. And Adam called his wife named Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam also, and unto Adam also, unto his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. He did what now? Made coats of skins and clothed them. He did what now? made coats of skins and clothed them. After all that, he said, you know what? I'm still going to cover y'all. Right? That's how it ends up being. We try to cover ourselves. It's not sufficient. All right? That's lying, cheating, <coughs> doing all these different things, fronting in front of people. That, that, I mean, that stuff's not sufficient. Not with God. So we need his son to cover us. Right? That's what's represented there when he's sitting there and like, no, don't worry about it. He made coats of what? Coats of skins and clothes. I mean, if you get a skin, where did it got to come from? An animal. And if an animal skin came, what happened to that animal? Dead. Somebody had to die for their sin. What do you think it's talking about? You think this is about animals and, and trees and all that? All oh, that's talking about Yahushua. What do you think Moses? Uh, when uh, what do you think Yahushua was talking about when he said, beginning at Moses and the prophets, he expounded on all things concerning what? Himself. He was talking, he said, listen, you reading Genesis think you talking about Adam and Eve. You really reading about me here. You thought this was a you thought this was about a, a skin from an animal being put on them? That's about me. I just got put on Adam and Eve. He said, everything that you're looking at, this is all the things concerning me. Right? That's the book. Every time everything we read in this book, it all links up to Yahushua. We think we're reading about people. Right? We think we're reading, we think Abraham was Abraham, huh? He go, oh, Father Abraham, have many sons. They taught us, right? We thought we were reading about him. No, nah, you wasn't reading about no darn Abraham. You know what you were reading about? Yahushua. Right? When Abraham, when Abraham took his wife, right? And he said, mm, no, nah, just tell him I'm your brother. Yahushua didn't say that to us. Right? He said he will stand in front of the midst of the brethren. At the same time, he said, well, I'm actually your husband, too, right? Y'all sure wasn't our husband, too? He's our, he's our husband, ain't he? Right? He's our husband, and he's our brother at the same time, according to the book. Just like Abraham and Sarah. Or Sarah. Right? All these things we look at in the book, when you talk about Esau. Right? You read about Esau, right? You read about Esau in Genesis? You remember that part, Jacob and Esau? Right? You had the twin brothers. They was in the womb together. Right? They came out. They start striving against each other and all that stuff. One of them went to go get a blessing. 
he pops said, you know what? Go get the meat. Go get the meat, you know what I'm saying? Then I, when you get the meat, I'll bless you. Mom's heard it. She ran in there, told Jacob, I'm about to cook this meat up for you. And you go put some, some skin over yourself, right? So you could feel like your brother, because his brother was hairy. Yeah, go ahead and put it over yourself so you can feel like your brother. Cover him. And now you can feel like your brother. That's him covering himself. Right? So he went over there to him. And then he feel around. Pops feel around. He's like, oh, maybe this is Esau. And he give him the, give him the blessing. Right? We think we're reading about Esau. And we think we're reading about uh, uh, Jacob and, and Isaac. But in reality, all we read about is exactly what we have to do to be accepted by our father. We have to cover ourselves with Yahweh Shua. Otherwise, the father going to look at us and be like, no, nah, nah, you ain't the one to get the blessing. But if we cover ourselves with Yahweh Shua, the father feel around and he say, you know what? I'll accept you. Only if we cover it with his blood. All these things that we look at, it's all about Yahweh Shua. Yeah, it's different name, different care. What about, what about, uh, uh, what do I want to think about? Joseph. Right? Joseph got put into a what? Prison. He got put into a pit, didn't he? Yeah. And he was left there as what? Dead. Y'all sure was, we just read y'all sure got put into a, a, a tomb. They went back, they rolled the thing back, he was alive, didn't he? Joseph, he he was left there, and then they rose him up to be the second in command of all of Egypt. Y'all sure he he went up and he sits where? Right next to the father. What you think we reading about when we look at all these things? Everything in this book linked back to the man. Right? That's why Adam and Eve, they're sitting there trying to hide. They're trying to get out of Dodd. And they tried to cover themselves. Right? Then the Most High God, sorry, son. Then the Most High God tried to line them up. He's like, don't worry about it. This is your punishment. This is your punishment. And this is your punishment. Oh, and uh, don't worry about it. I'll go ahead and get some. I'll kill this animal and sacrifice him and cover you with it. Somebody got to die for your sin. Right? Now y'all go on about your merry way. That's what's important for us. We have to be able to see the character of God from the beginning we had a merciful God. From the beginning we had a graceful God. But at the same time, the man does not play. Same time, he expects righteousness from us. Right? We have to be able to have both of those ideas in our mind to say, oh, it's not just grace and I can do whatever I want. Right? And at the same time, it's not that I don't have a chance with the man. It's these things together, working together for me to work for his plan. All I got to do is be able to willingly give everything I got. Right? It's Exodus chapter 35. It's Exodus chapter 35. Give me verse, uh, give me verse 29 again. This is yours, actually. Thanks. Appreciate it. It's Exodus chapter 35. Give me verse 29. And the children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work, which the Lord commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. And he has filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, mm -hmm. in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. So look at that. What's his name? Bezaleel. Bezaleel. Grab, uh, hold on what we got here. Grab Hebrews chapter 8. So remember, he gave he gave them all these designs and all this stuff that he needed to make. But at the same time, is Moses, you know what I'm saying, the best carpenter or the best, you know what I'm saying, architect or what is he called? Arch architect. Arch architect, right? Is he the best architect in the world? Maybe not, right? So the most High God was like, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you somebody that will handle this for you. Right, I give you somebody, they're they going to have all the skills. I'm going to give you people with a willing heart to bring you the materials. I'm going to give you people with a willing heart to do the design, to, to build this stuff and put it together. Right? All Moses had to do was kick it off. Moses had to just stand up there, this is the plan, y'all, to get it started. Right? Then all the people, they're going to put it all together, you know what I'm saying? They're going to work together, put it all together, we're going to make this thing happen. Right? This is Hebrews chapter 8. Chapter 8, give me verse, what did I say, 1? No, you didn't say nothing. Oh, well. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary 
and of a true and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Uh -huh. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, whereof it is of a necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Uh -huh. For if we were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Uh huh. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. He, he serves unto what? The example and shadow of heavenly things. He, these things, he talking about priests and sacrifices and all this stuff serves unto an example. Like right? you read in Leviticus. Right? All this stuff, stuff like you that's read in he, example. That's what he's talking about right now. It's, a, it's an example in the shadow of heavenly things. Alright, keep going. According to the law. Mm -hmm. Wait. Who serve in his example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. What is what is uh admonished mean? Warned. Right? So he said these things are an example in the shadow of God. Just like when Moses was warned of God when he what? Was about to make the tabernacle. So when God took him on 40 days, 40 nights on, on the on the mount, Moses like God warned, he is like, listen. Make stuff sure you make everything. This stuff got to be exact. This what you making is the shadow of, the, of, of what's in heaven, right? This is an example of what's in heaven. It's not the actual thing, but I'm giving you the specs of what you would see in heaven. This thing got to be right. He warned him like you're not playing with no regular stuff now, boy. This is some real stuff. You better line this stuff up right. See how you think Moses come down and feel that? Nice. All right, look, we got you know what I'm saying. We got to get this stuff together, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, God. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you somebody. What was his name? Bezaliel. He said, I'm going to give you somebody to take care of it. Bezaliel going to write all this up for you. Don't worry about it. Right? Keep going. No, no I don't want you to keep going there. I'll take that back. Grab, uh, grab John for me. John chapter 5, verse 39. John chapter 5, verse 39. After we get that, I'm going to go over to Matthew chapter 5. It's John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. So this is Yahushua talking. Just like we were just talking about, we think we're reading about, we think we're reading about us, we think we're reading about Joseph. You know what I'm saying? A Christian, a Christian will tell you when you look in the Bible, look, look for you. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that's kind of how, when you're feeling down. Uh, Pastor, just, I mean, what can I read today to just kind of make me feel a little, you know what I'm saying? I'm going through a few things, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, some real stuff. I lost my grandma, right? I lost my grandma. What what can I read that, that well, you know what I'm saying? What would you suggest I read for that, right? It's, I mean, it's, it's real, right? It's a real thing that you're going through. Pastor, but, oh, well, you know, open up Psalms or this, that, and the other, and then just read through the whole book of Psalms. Because when we're reading, what are we looking for? We're looking for us, right? We're looking for something to make us feel better or make us feel a certain way, all right? Book, nothing wrong with that necessarily, but that's not what the book is for, right? The book was never meant to just make us feel a certain way. The book was meant to teach us, to give us information that we can act on, right? So we look at, we looking for us, right? You got other people that's looking for the story, right? Some pastors will teach you, be like, well, you looking, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's Joseph, and that's, that's, that's John, and there's all these different people, right? The way we really need to look at the book is we look for him. Right? That's why he said, search the scriptures. For in them, you think you have eternal life. Whole time, it's testifying of me. Everything that you're reading is testifying of me. Right? It's trying to tell you something about me. You think you're reading about all these other people, you're really reading about me. Right? Grab uh, Matthew chapter uh, 5, verse 17. Because he told us to search the what? Scriptures. Scriptures. Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament. You say scripture, that's Old Testament. Right? Wasn't no New Testament when y'all sure were walking around. He is the New Testament. He was the New Covenant. Right? Wasn't no New Testament. So he said, search the scripture. He said, search the Old, Te Old Testament. Right? It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Watch what the book says. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. What's the law? Moses. Genesis. Exodus. Leviticus. Numbers. Deuteronomy, he said, think not I came to destroy that, or the prophets. That's Old Testament, everything he's talking about. He said, don't think I came to do away with the Old Testament. What else? I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. 
For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it till all be fulfilled. And we still got a heaven, we still got an earth. I got that. I'm not it only makes sense to entertain that type of conversation. The old testament done away with. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, no, it was nice. It was no really it was nice meeting you. I think I got somewhere I need to be. That's it. I'm not even about to hear you entertain that conversation. The man just told you, think not. He said, until heaven, he gave you a sign. He was like, you will know when it's past, because it won't be no heaven and it won't be no earth. That make it real clear for me. It's like, okay, then that thing, okay, we good then. Old Testament's still here. We all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we good. All right, we good. He's got to throw something up in there. All right, we still here. We good. You know what I'm saying? We look at it. There's no reason to entertain that conversation. Old Testament's still here. It's still valuable for us. Right? It still has its own value, the original value it's always had. All that. Nothing changed. He tell you, don't even, don't even think I came for something like that. Right? Then you go back and you see John 5. That's why he's telling you, search the scripture. Right? Look for all these different things. And in them, you think you have eternal life. Okay? Go to Colossians. It's Colossians chapter 2. It's Colossians chapter 2. Uh, Colossians. Uh, it's after, uh, what is Colossians after? Ephesians. Ephesians after Ephesians and Philippians. After Philippians. New Testament. What are you over here, man? So it's going to be after like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Then you're going to get to Corinthians. You're going to pass Romans. You're gonna, yeah, and it's right after Oh, no. Yeah, you okay. right. Chapter 2, you good. It's Colossians chapter 2. Give me verse uh, 14, maybe. Is that what I want? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was written against us. Mm -hmm. which this is Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was written against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Mm -hmm. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them, openly triumphing over them in it. Mm -hmm. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or respect of a holiday. He said, holy don't day. let anybody judge you in meat or in drink or respect of a holy day, right? Or of a new moon or of the Sabbath day. Or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Why? Which are a shadow of things to come. But These the are body what? And the Messiah. Shadow of things to come. These are a shadow of things to come. But the body is where? In the Messiah. He just told us the new moon, the holy days, right? The Sabbath, right? All these different things, they're a shadow of what is to come. You heard Hebrews talking about it in a different way, right? Christians will use that. You know how Christians will use that? They'll say, we don't have to keep the Sabbath. All right, the Bible just told us don't let nobody judge you according to a Sabbath because it's just a shadow. But the body is in Christ. They make it seem like when they say it, they interpret that as saying, "See, the body is what means something. The shadow don't mean that." Right? That's how they look at it. But if we look at what Hebrews told us, he strictly told Moses, didn't he? He said, "Moses, what you what you making right now is a shadow of what you see in heaven. Don't you mess this up, baby. Don't do it." You mess it up. That you done. Right? He strictly he warned them. Right? If you don't have the history of it, you don't even you don't get the right context of what he's saying here. When they say shout it up, that's me. We gotta hold on to this because the real thing coming. Might as well get used to knowing and doing it now. Right? The real thing gonna be here. We got it. When 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 we got the shadow of the tabernacle, right? When we got that, then we just be like, all right, that looked nice, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. I mean, what if, I mean, what if I just touched it? Dead. What was it, Uriah? Not Uriah. Uh, uh, er, no. Uh, it was... Uh, er and Onan? Nah. Two yeah. That's what you have to oh, you talking about the fire. Yeah, you know what the, I'm saying? The, the I'm, that, that too. I'm talking about... Uh, Uzziah. Was it Uzziah? With David. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got Uzziah. You know what I'm saying? David trying to bring bring up the, the Ark of the Covenant up to the uh, temple. This far, far further down in our history, we will get there. But you know what I'm saying? He bringing the Ark of the Covenant to our temple. You know what I'm saying? And then he just sitting there playing with that thing. He what what did do? It slip a little bit. And he tried to catch it. He tried. Look, this we love our Ark of the Covenant now. 
Yeah, Uzziah, Uzziah. Uzza is what it is. He right, not Uzziah, it's Uzza. He, he was grabbing that thing, you know what I'm saying? They carrying, they walking with it, and you got to carry it. It slipped. So he was trying to make sure it didn't fall on the ground and break, right? He touched that thing, and guess what happened to him? Guess how God blessed him? Dropped dead. Killed his butt. After that, everybody was just like, all right, oh, that thing can stay right there. They were like, oh, okay. Look, he, he took a he took a uh, a man from uh, Edom. He took a man from Edom. He was like, yeah, you can keep you can keep the Ark of the Covenant in your house. You can keep it right here, and then we'll come back and get it later when we can bring it up the right way. Cause David knew at that point, he was like, what we doing wasn't right. It felt right. They felt like they were doing something good, but guess what? They didn't hear and learn. Cause yeah. if they heard and learned, the book would have told them a Levite, and not just any Levite, a particular set of the Levites, the Kohath, the Kohathites. They're the only ones that can carry this. Mm. Right? So you got the family of Levites and a family within that family is the only ones that can carry this. And they have to carry it on the poles on their shoulders. Like you couldn't just, they had it on a cart with a cow dragging it. Yeah. And God told them specifically, this is how you carry it and this who can carry it. And they didn't, they wouldn't pay attention. Make a mess. Yeah. Most High God just made an example out of them and killed them. That's the shadow. That's the shadow. I mean, that's the shadow. We talking about the shadow right now. Most High God just killed you over the shadow. And now they're going to try to tell us because it's a the Sabbath and holy days and all that. That's just a shadow. But the body of it is in Jesus. All that stuff done away with. Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. Y'all keep playing, though. So all that stuff you read in Moses, all that stuff, everybody going to have to do in the kingdom of God. All that stuff. All of it coming everybody right on back. Right on back. Well, let's say most of it coming right on back. It's going to be a form of that doing that we're doing in, in the kingdom. Yeah. With Yahushua With the new being family. our king. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be running the whole show. They'll be like, yeah, go ahead and make these sacrifices. Yeah. Right? So we're going to have to kill goats. We're going to have to kill goats. We're going to have to kill all types of stuff. Yeah. Well, we ain't going to be killing it. Yeah, the priest. You know what I'm saying? The priest going to be killing it. Yeah, yeah the priest going to be killing it. We just going to so, be eating. That's why you read the New Testament, you wouldn't know that. You know what I mean? That's explained in the prophets. And, uh, and also, just now what we read, um, it's a shadow of things to come, right? Yeah. All that stuff's a shadow of things to come mean future. Yeah. You know, so what you think it means when the kingdom is established? The most I showed Moses, this is what happens in heaven. Mm -hmm. So in Revelations, he said, heaven's coming to earth. So what you think we're going to be having to do if heaven come and hit? Mm -hmm. so. exactly. All right. That's what it's about, things to come. What do you think about, yeah, that's, that's what the whole thing. Grab uh, Matthew chapter 24. Let's try to wrap this up. This is Matthew chapter 24. It's Matthew chapter 24. Verse, uh, I mean like verse 3. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be the sign of your coming? The sign of things to come. Right? A shadow of things to come. Right? So they want to know, what, when shall these things be? And when are you coming back? How are we going to know when you're coming back? Right? Keep going. And of the end of the world. Mm -hmm. So how do we know when the end of the world coming and when you coming back here? Right? Jump on down. Give me verse like 30. What 30 say? 30 might be too far. Give me like verse 24. It's Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets, uh -huh. and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. He said, these people going to be out here doing stuff, showing great signs and wonders. Matter of fact, you going to mess around and think it's the very elect. You mess around. I mean, God going to do something, and that's going to be a real miracle. Then guess what? Some magician gonna come along and do the exact same thing, and you're gonna be like, maybe that's God. The whole book is trying to tell us something. We look at the whole book. We look. Y'all thought it was an accident that these magicians were doing the same thing Moses was doing? Mm -hmm. You don't think that's gonna happen again? You don't think so? Alright. We were in captivity in Egypt. Right? Hebrews, in captivity in Egypt. Most high God sent the man. To get us out of captivity. To get us out, he started doing miracles. Right? Guess what didn't happen? He didn't say, sneak out this way. I'll blind Pharaoh so that he won't know y'all leaving. 
and he'll just find out about it later. He didn't say that. He also didn't say, I just kill all the Egyptians, and then y'all can just leave. He didn't say none of those. You know what the Most High God did? He went through this long process to put Pharaoh through so much that the Pharaoh decides to let them go. That's a difference, right? It's a difference. It's anybody can just be like, you know what? I'm just going to kill him, and we all going to walk out of here. Anybody can do that. Most like God say, I can't get no glory from that now. I'm not around to do that. You know what these people going to say? You just snuck them. You know what I'm saying? You ever, you, ever, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anybody, anybody from the hood or something like that? You know what I'm saying? Anybody, anybody from the hood? I mean, you know what I'm saying? You, you got somebody like, I'm going to go toes with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we going to go head up. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing. But you go head up with somebody and just go blow for blow with them. You know what I'm saying? That's that's respectable. You know what I'm saying? In the hood, that thing respectable. Like, yeah, he got hands. You know what I'm saying? Even if he loses a fight. Like, he he with it, though. They know what you say. He with it. He, I mean, you go talk. But then you just take that man. He just, you know what I'm saying? He don't say nothing. He just, blah! Some people like that. Some people be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He snuck him. He snuck him. But what the other people going to say on the other side? He only did it because he's the only reason he knocked my boy out is because he snuck him. Yo, your boys, right? Your boy's gonna be like, yeah, you got him, yeah, you know I'm saying. But his boy's gonna be like, man, you just snuck him. You go head up with him, you gonna lose. You think God wanna have that argument? You think God wanna be like, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, the guy just snuck Pharaoh. That if it had it played out any other way, no, nah, God said we got something for that. Now you gonna admit I'm winning, right? You gonna tell. You going to let my people go. I ain't going to tell you. At any point, all this stuff I'm doing, at any point I can get my people out of here. That ain't the point. I want you to bow down, boy. What you talking about? I want you to say they can go. You running it right? This is your, your kingdom? All right, cool. You say they can go. And that's what he did. He went through that whole process just to get Pharaoh to submit to him. Right? Because that's where God can get glory from. If everybody like Pharaoh is the baddest man on the planet. And the most high God pumped him and make him, everybody else, make him in front of everybody say, you know what? He the man. Now guess what? I'm the man. That's how God can look at it. I'm the man. Y'all know it. Pharaoh said it too. That's who y'all trust, right? Well, he said it too. Right? So that's what happened there, right? What you think going to happen if we in captivity in America, we Hebrews, and the Bible say, just like when we left Exodus, or just like when we left Egypt, he going to do the same thing again, but all around the world. When that happens, that means it's going to have to be a man, because Exodus, it was a man, right? So when we left Egypt, it was a man. That means it's going to have to be a man coming through, and he going to get us out of here, right? And guess what he going to have to end up doing? Miracles. And guess what somebody else on the other side going to end up doing? Miracles to try to match what he doing. And that's what the book is trying to tell us. He said, it's going to be some false prophets telling you some stuff, and y'all going to think it's true. It's going to almost deceive even the elect, the elect of the people, those of us that hear and learn and end up going to Yahweh Shua. He said, it's going to almost get us. Keep reading. Watch this. This stuff ain't no darn joke. Behold, I have told you before. Mm -hmm. That's why if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert. They said, hey, if they say, hey, he's in the desert, let's go right now. What are you supposed to say to him? Go not forth. Guess what they're doing right now? You got a group of people, they learned that we Hebrews, and they went to uh, Israel. Guess where they sitting at? A dark desert. Right now. And they say every year around this time, because Passover is coming up. Every year. They say, you if you keep Passover wherever you are in your captivity, you a sinner. You have to keep Passover here in the land. So they go to the land, and they get them a lamb, a legit lamb, because in our Passover, we would slay a lamb. Right, they get a legit lamb and they slay that thing. Guess what? None of them are priests. <laughs> so now, so now they saying we sinners because we celebrate Passover here, right? We ain't slicing up no lamb though. They over there, they 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 supposedly in the land. They in the desert though, but they they supposedly in the land. They say this is where everything is. This is where y'all sure gonna come back at, right? They slice open the lamb. They the sinners. Book book tell you. Don't you, don't you make no sacrifices, not according to the book, not according to these sacrifices. You can make your own personal sacrifice however you want. Just make sure you do it on something that's not carved out, right? But he said, this, these sacrifices that are written in the book, that's reserved for the Levites. Not just the Levites, the sons of Aaron, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm talking about, huh? You reading that thing right now, it sounds serious, don't it? They lay that thing out like you, him, and if a stranger come by, let him be put to what? That got that. See, his first two sons got killed for doing the incense wrong. 
What you mean? You mean Aaron couldn't even cry about it? Yeah, he told him. <laughs> Aaron was like, look, Moses was like, man, why you didn't, uh, you know what I'm saying? Mo, Mo, like, he was like, look, bro, you know what I'm saying, bro, do you think it's appropriate? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My son, I just lost two so I couldn't even cry about it. Do you think it's appropriate for me to be doing the work right now? Moses like, all right. You right. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'll leave you alone, bro. You good. This is a heavy, this is a heavy thing the most high God put on us. That's what I said, the burden of the Lord. That's what it is. You read the prophet books, it said the burden of the Lord from given to Jeremiah. Right? It's a heavy thing we gotta yeah. carry for the most high God. We look at these things. The, the 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 book is trying to warn us through some some of the stuff through codes, right? Because we, we read the old testament, and it's not it's not just saying, hey, this is gonna happen again. It just lays it out because the most high God said the mystery. If it was flat out. It wouldn't be no different between the multitude that follow Yahushua and the disciples. He said the mystery is given to those who hear and learn. Right? He said the mystery is given to you, not them. That's why we can't just be mere Christians. Right? We can't just be Muslim. Muslims, they say Muslim means submit to God. Christians means what? Followers of Christ. Followers of Christ. I didn't even know that. Right? That's what it means. Christian, that's what it means. Followers of Christ. Right? So now... Multitudes follow Christ. How many Christians you got? Like over a thousand, over three thousand, ten thousand denominations. That's thing. half of America. That's a third of all the religions in the world. It's like a third of the population, really. It's thirty-three thousand denominations. Thirty-three thousand different denominations. Christians running the show. They say, you know what that sound like to me? A great multitude, right? But we have to look for disciples. We have to look to be disciples so that the mystery be given to us. That way, when we look in the book, we see this stuff. We're like, okay, I get it. I see what you're talking about. See, there's a testimony among my disciples. That's it. That's book. That's Old Testament book at that. All right? Keep going. What else we got here from Yahushua? All right? Because we talking about the, the shadow of things to come. Watch this. Behold, I've told you before. That's why if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east, he says, as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, uh huh. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see some lightning. I mean, let's say we in the north right now, right? And then let's say Tony way down in Henderson, but some lightning flash, and it seems like it flashed right above here. Tony don't see it. Of course, he sees it. He says, the lightning shot. I don't care what part of town you on. At that lightning flash, that's how it's gonna be when I come. Everybody gonna see it. Everybody gonna know I'm coming. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, he's over here. Come over here. You know, you know when I'm there. Because everybody gonna see it. Right? Keep going. Watch what he say. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of these those days, mm -hmm. shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Uh-oh. If the sun's darkened. And the moon don't give light. And the stars fall from heaven. What else going to happen after that? And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. Coming on the power clouds? Of great glory. So, let me just... I mean, if you see clouds in the sky, what does that usually do? Rain? Rain? What about covers the up the sun? Covers up the sun, don't it? It casts like a big old shadow sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but then after that, I mean, before that, actually, he said the sun shall be darkened, so it's already a shadow. The moon is not giving, so that's a shadow. And then the star is taken up by the sun, so that's a shadow. So you just left with a big old shadow. And the only thing you see in the sky is not the S U N, but the S O N. So you read about how the cloud covered it. The tabernacle, right? When they built it. Yeah, and whenever wherever the cloud went, that's where the people went in the daytime. Same thing. That's what that was talking about the Messiah. The shadow of things to come. Mm -hmm. Alright? They try to make these things insignificant for us only because it's been insignificant. It ain't a, a, a lot of times you look at these pastors and all these people that we've grown up listening to and all this stuff. Halfway. I can't give I can't take all the responsibility from Halfway it ain't they fault. Because they just taught what they've been taught. Right? 
And the person who taught them was taught something like that too. And so it just keeps going and it, it just comes from a culture of people not challenging based off of what they read in the book. They just go on whatever they taught. So that's the part that they fault, right? Once you assume to be a leader, a teacher of the people, you have to be responsible for what you're teaching. So therefore, it's their fault in that aspect. But we can have sympathy in a sense that they were brought up that way and it's sometimes difficult to kick against your, your mother, your father, your, your pastor, and all these different things. It's difficult for somebody who seems, that has all your respect and is well-versed in what they say. It's difficult to go to them and be like, nah, I don't think that's right. All right, that ain't hard for me. I had a whole lot of conversation with my mom. My mom believed. I mean, Christian, the way a Christian ought to be Christian. Mine too. Right? And so I think it's just hard. My pop's a Christian minister. That thing difficult. Right? It's still uncomfortable t- talking to my pops about this stuff. You know what I'm saying? No, no, we don't see eye to eye. You know what I'm saying? My mom is starting to come around. You know what I'm saying? But we don't see eye to eye. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? I got that. What I'm going to do? I'm going to go with you or I'm going to go with the book? I got to go with the book. My hope, my prayer is that you come with the book with me. I don't care nothing about you following me. Follow the truth. Right? But that's how, that's what it comes down to. Right? They hear and they say these things and they repeat these things and they become a part of it. We have to clean that out, right? Just like we, when, when Tony came to us, you know what I'm saying? Let's go back. Let's start off. Matter of fact, he told us. He was like, I just want to go back and I want to relearn everything. That's the only way you're going to do it. There's no way you can mix. You can, there's no way uh, James told us. He said, you can't, have, you can't mix fresh water with salt water. That thing don't work. You know what I'm saying? You can't do it. All of it going to become salt water. Right, so you got to be able to say, you know what? Yeah, that's over there. Yeah, that's over there. And then you choose, huh? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That thing gonna bust. All right, make a darn mess. All right, where do we end off? Exodus. Yeah. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. How many verses we got left in Exodus? Let's try to finish this thing off. About four. Okay, let's finish out Exodus chapter 35. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thirty-five, thirty-one. Mm-hmm. And he has filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works. Who is he talking about? Bezaleel. Guess what Bezaleel's name means? Shadow of God. Deep, ain't it? That ain't crazy, ain't it? Go look that thing up when you got some free time. Just look it up. Exodus chapter 35. Look up what the name, uh, the meaning of Bezaleel means. It means shadow of God. It just so happens this shadow of God built the stuff that was based off of a pattern that is a shadow of God. You think you're reading about Bezaleel. You're reading about Yahushua. Watch this. Keep going. And to devise curious works to work in gold and in silver and in brass, mm-hmm. and in the cutting of stones to set them, and in carving of wood to make all any manner of cunning work. Mm-hmm. And he has put in his heart that he may teach both he and Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach of the tribe of Dan. Mm-hmm. Them has he filled with wisdom of heart to work all manner of work of the engraver and of the cunning workmen and of the embroiderer in blue and in purple and scarlet and in fine linen. And of the weaver, even of them that do any work, and of those that devise cunning work. Mm-hmm. That's the end of the chapter. That's good. So when we come, excuse me, when we come in next week, excuse me, when we come in next week, we're going to uh, chapter 36. From chapter 36, it goes into almost like what we read through about chapter, chapter uh, 28, 29, um, all those, where it was kind of giving you the specs of how to build all those, all the art of the Ark of the Covenant, the candlesticks, all that stuff. So it was giving you, this is how long it need to be, this is how high. it's kind of going to go through that again, because now they're actually putting it together. So it's describing them putting together the plans. So that's going to happen from about 36 on to about 39 or 40. And then uh, we'll probably, we'll probably kind of discuss some of it. We won't read it too much in detail, but we'll discuss some of it. And then uh, we'll go to chapter 40 and kind of end off Exodus. Um, then after we end off Exodus, we'll jump in the following week in Leviticus um, and talk a lot about the sacrifices and all that. That's where it get. Uh, that's where it, I think that's where 
a lot of uh, we when we started this time we said we wanted to dive into the law and really be detailed about the law because it's a, I think you have a lot of people a lot of Hebrews you probably met some that you know they'll say oh no I know the law you know what I'm saying I know the law you know what I'm saying they talk about the Christians you know what I'm saying have you ever met a Hebrew as a light no good <laughs> so <laughs> so you and me you know what I'm saying eventually you're gonna run into one right. And so what a Hebrew Israelite is, it's a person who found out our history. They don't find out that we were taken from Africa and put into slavery in America. And they're going to find out, oh, we weren't just random Africans that were chosen, right? It's not like they just said, mm, just give me any black person. No, other black people looked and said, these particular black people are not like us, right? We Africans, we of this tribe in Africa, we of this tribe. And these people came from somewhere else. They black like us, but they not like us. Get they butt out of here. They don't do what we do. They don't worship what we worship. And they stuck up. That's how people saw us. Because our, our people, we is like, nah, we clean. We ain't do that. They, they tell a story like. Everything you read in the law, like how God was like, you got to be clean. You know what I'm saying? Consecrate yourself. Wash your hands. You know what I'm saying? You do this. You do that. Stay outside the camp. All that stuff was what we did. That's what is in us. Like, even right now, you don't run into a lot of us are germaphobes. You don't play that stuff, you know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people of us that are German, but we don't play that stuff because it's just in us. That's natural for our people. Yeah, we used to get whooped from right? outside with no shoes. Yeah, you see these white folks in there? You got, I went, we went to that place, that German play. you got all these white folks walking around, they charge you 4 or $5 for socks. You know what I'm saying? You got all these white folks just walking around barefoot, jumping in the thing. I was looking like, man, $5 for socks? Go ahead, give me And then you socks. look over there, and you know what I'm saying? But them white folks ain't got, I don't think about it, like, maybe I just go out there and jump with no socks. Then I saw them white folks one. I like no. Go ahead, go ahead and give me. I had to buy five socks. My whole go ahead, four pairs of socks. You know what I'm saying? That thing is expensive though, right? You look at it, but that ain't worth it. I ain't about to be walking around here after DP. That's crazy. Crazy. We just a clean. It's just in us to be like that because that thing always been in us. So you had these people that we is in Africa and we clean and they dirty and we, you know how we looking at them. We always look at Gentiles like, well, don't touch me. You know what I'm saying? We are. We is always kind of racist. I just, I mean, just to keep it real, we is always kind of racist. Our people. He's always kind of racist when you look at other people. Because the most our guy started off the book, he's like, you know what I'm saying? You're a peculiar people in my sight. You special in my sight. You can't tell us that. We black. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell us we special. And then we're going to be like, man, we special to God. So, you know, we were walking around just kind of having that, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were really lofty. And that's why, that's why God had a problem with us. He was like, you know what I'm saying? No, you, y'all missing it. So, you can imagine even in Africa, we kind of kept that attitude. You got these African running around, these Muslims and all that stuff. Yeah, like, man, we don't mess with y'all like that anyway. You know what I'm saying? We like to do weird stuff, and y'all like to do weird stuff. You know what I'm saying? We don't mess with y'all like that anyway. So when it came down to somebody being chosen for slavery, they all conspired, right? The white Christians, the Muslim Africans conspired to get the Hebrews. No, we got and they brought we us can all win. Why are we fighting each other? Yeah, because the Muslim, the black win. Muslims and the white Christians was fighting at first, yeah. right? They, they is going to, you'll read, you know what I'm saying, you might read, you know what I'm saying, you might see memes on Facebook like, did you know black people ran Europe and all that stuff, was kings and queens in Europe and all that stuff. You read that stuff and be like, dang, I ain't never knew that. When you read that, what it's talking about, this was black Muslims and they were kings and queens in Europe because they took over all their stuff, right? That wasn't us though. They make it seem like this is, we all the same black people, all black people alike. No, no, no. Two different means. Just like all white people ain't alike, all black people ain't alike either. You got different, you got Europeans. You know what I'm saying? Then you also got white people and, and, and I mean, I'm sorry, not European. You got, uh, like, the United Kingdom. And you also got white people in Russia. Right? Two different people. They'll look at you and be like, no, that's not. You got Irish people. You got all these different people. They'll tell you right up. Yeah, we white, but we not the same people. Right? Same thing with us. You got a bunch of different Africans. You got a bunch of people that dark skin. Not the same. So they recognize that. Put our butts in slavery. When Hebrew Israelites learn this, they take on to that. And they say, okay, we Hebrews. We descendants of the Israelites. So then they say, Christians lied to us this whole time. So then they get bitter, right? Christian Christianity is a white man religion, it's that and the other. Some of them reject the New Testament altogether and say, we just rock with the Old Testament. Some of them rock with the Old Testament, but, I mean, I'm sorry, with the New Testament, but, you know what I'm saying, there's certain things that it feels too Christian to them, so they won't accept it. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of them be like, well, Jesus or Yahushua, he wasn't really God, right? He's not like up there. He's just a man, right? He's just a, like a great man. You know what I'm saying? Some of them kind of had that, that that idea because some stuff for them feels too Christian because that's what they learned. It's like it's too close to what Christians talk. So they try to make it different and all that. Yeah, but some things Christians say is right. Yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff. Of a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that Christians say is right just based off of the fact they're getting it from our book. The problem is 
the stuff that Christians say is wrong is very confusing to people, which caused them not to follow the book. Right? So that's why it's important where you got to correct all that stuff. Some of it even feel petty. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that come here and be like, man, y'all pick on the Christians all the time. Because it feel petty. But in reality, all these little things, you feel like, you know what I'm saying? You think that you got 17 little things. You know what I'm saying? That thing going to throw off the whole picture. A hundred pennies is what? A that thing, a dollar, just like anything else. And I need them dollars. You know what I'm saying? So that's why that's why you got to pick out all that stuff and be like, no, no, no. Because this, it may seem like, okay, I get it. It might be a little mistake. It may seem little now. When you get way down the road, though, that little mistake throw off your whole calculation. That thing, I mean, that thing just throw it off. It's like a map. You could take a big old algebra problem. And you could just, I mean, just put a minus sign instead of a plus sign. It's a li- That's a little mistake. I just, I didn't write the down line. That's the only thing... This whole everything right, I just I just forgot to write one line down. That throw off your whole equation. Right? And that's how it is. These things look small, but really, in the grand scheme of things, right here it's small. You back up, now nah, that thing big. That thing mess up your whole darn equation. So that's what happened. The Hebrew is like they you know what I'm saying, they'll talk to you and they be like, Yeah, no, Christians lie about this and Christian this and this, that, and the other, da da da. And they'll throw all this stuff out there and they end up making a mess. And they hold claim to fame. The reason why I'm saying all this, they hold claim to fame would be, we know the law. We keep the law. We believe the law. Right? But I'm learning when I, as I speak to these gentlemen that they don't know the law. Right? Really, they just Christians who've rejected Christianity. Right? They haven't really learned. In Christianity, we, don't, we, don't really, we haven't learned nothing. So they haven't learned anything either. But they just reject the idea of Christianity. And then they learn something about the law, a little something. And they say, we experts in the law, but really they're not. So what we want to do is we want to really go through the law and get the details. Hopefully, some of our Hebrew brethren, they'll watch in, and they'll really start to learn the law, and it'll, it'll straighten out some of the, the misunderstanding of the New Testament. right? Because now they see the law is not just dietary, what they call a dietary law. It's not just not eating pork and, 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 and not eating shellfish. right? The law is just not just celebrating Passover and, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. It's not just um, it's not just uh, keeping the Sabbath. Right. It's not just wearing tassels on your clothes and all that. It's like, you know, it's the, the law is a whole lot more than all that stuff. And so we want to get detailed and get into it. And when we get into Leviticus, I think we're going to be touching a piece that a lot of people don't pay attention to, to touching a lot of the sacrifices and a lot of stuff that might go over people's heads. So <clears throat> we'll look at it, try to line it up. And from that, we'll be able to see the shadow of things to come, right? We'll be able to see kind of a form of how life will be um, if the Most High God uh, stays with us and, 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 and keeps us in the faith and we choose to be obedient to his message. Um, and then, you know, from there, it's just life ever after after that point, right? We just got to hold out till we get there. It's going to be a beautiful thing. You know what I'm saying? We just got to hold out till we get there. That thing going to get long, going to get tired. We just got to keep consistent. That's the only thing the most I got looking for. He looking for people that will be consistent. Just stay there. Not, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I feel righteous now. And then a couple weeks, take it off and then come back. You know what I'm saying? I feel And I ain't talking about coming here. Right? I ain't talking about whether you're here or not. That, that don't make no sense. What I'm talking about is being consistent with obedience. Being consistent with learning this word. You can't take breaks with learning this word. You got to be consistent with it. Keep reading. Keep doing whatever you got to do. Keep hearing. But you got to be consistent. Otherwise... You just leave too much opportunity for yourself. We ain't going to be able to cover ourselves. All right? Any questions? You don't got no questions? Let's yeah, pray I out. earlier about uh, Abraham's bosom. Like, uh, when you die, do you go to Abraham's bosom? And I told her, I was like, the righteous will go to Abraham's bosom, but not the wicked. Because in the parable, uh, the man couldn't get over that. Yeah, so a bosom is like saying side. All right. So an uh, example of that is Moses stuck his hand in his bosom, pulled it out, and his hand was white. That was one of the miracles. So that's that's like sticking in the side, right? So it's saying Abraham's side. You know what I'm saying? It's staying at, staying at the side of Abraham. You know what I'm saying? So what that's saying is it's a it's a it's a sign or a, a parable that's saying that the people, Abraham is a righteous man, a friend of God. So are you on Abraham's side or are you on the other side, right? So it's basically you want to stand on Abraham's side. So when the righteous die, 
um, and we die in our righteousness and we've turned from sin, then we are dead, right? Just dead, just like anybody else dead. But our death is on the side of Abraham, right? The side of the resurrection, right? And then the Most High God will bring us up. All the others, he'll bring them up too. But when he brings them up, he brings them up just to burn forever, right? So everybody gets resurrected, right? The good and the bad. That's one thing a lot of people don't realize. Everybody get resurrected. Some people get resurrected on their eternal life and others on their eternal damnation. So people that get cremated, got burned, and all that stuff, most of God going to meticulously put their butt right back together, right? Ash by ash. And then bring them up and say, oh, let me judge you according to the books. Your name ain't in the book of life. Great. See you later. And now put together, they're going to burn forever. And now they're going to they they're not turn to ashes. They're just going to burn, right? So that's what we have to look at when we try to do it. When it's talking about Abraham and Bosom, that's what they're saying. It's just saying, it's a signal for saying you're, you're dying on the righteous side of things. Any other questions you want to ask for? <laughs> Let's pray out. <laughs> I had a friend of